Jeep just revealed a revolutionary compressed air engine that claims to wipe out the entire EV industry. What? They're saying it's so ahead of its time, it has the auto world shaking in its boots. Imagine a combustion engine with no emissions. Sounds impossible, right? So, is this the death knell for EVs or just a clever marketing ploy? In this video, we'll dissect Jeep's audacious claims, explore the science behind compressed air power, and see if this is truly a game changer for the auto industry. Now, what the Jeep CEO is doing is quite crazy. He's working on a compressed air engine that's got fuel efficiency reaching a mind-blowing 120 miles per gallon, all while cutting down nearly 99% of current tailpipe emissions. With this innovation, combustion cars can hit the road without the guilt of emissions weighing them down. Now, we can say that Jeep's been on a roll lately, cooking up some seriously cool stuff in their labs. They've teamed up these slick engines with a fresh new transmission that's squeezing out an impressive 55 miles per gallon. Jeep has also been doing some serious eco-friendly work. They've slashed their CO2 emissions by 95% compared to regular old internal combustion engines. It all started back in 2014. Stellantis PUO308, a company at the forefront, is ushering in this revolutionary system. But what's the big deal, you ask? They slashed internal friction, tossed in lockup clutch converters to keep slippage at bay, and voila, you've got yourself a recipe for reduced CO2 emissions across the board. And trust me, the numbers are jaw-dropping. And with its exclusive combo of selective catalytic reduction and a particulate filter laced with additives. Sounds fancy, huh? But it boils down to 90% cut in emissions and a near total elimination of pesky particulates. Now, let's break it down Barney style. You know those hybrid cars like the iconic Toyota Prius, right? Well, how about ditching those hefty batteries and swapping them out for good compressed air? Yes, that's the magic at work here. Now, how does it work? Unlike traditional combustion engines that rely on gasoline or diesel, a compressed air engine uses pressurized air to power the vehicle. A giant air pump connects to the car. This pump compresses air into a tank on board the vehicle, similar to how you inflate a tire, but to much higher pressures. Think hundreds of times the pressure in your car tire. This compressed air becomes the fuel for the engine. When you press the accelerator, the compressed air is released from the tank and flows into a special chamber in the engine. This air expands rapidly, pushing a piston down in a cylinder, just like a gasoline engine. This movement of the piston creates the power that turns the wheels. Now, as the compressed air is used, the pistons move and the car runs. Once the air tank is depleted, the car needs to be recharged by refilling it with compressed air, similar to refueling a conventional car. This hybrid air system is smart, like really smart. It offers three modes, gas only, air only, and a combined mode. And get this, an electronic management system does all the heavy lifting, autonomously switching between modes based on your driving needs. Cruising down the highway? No problem. The system sticks to the internal combustion engine. But once you hit those city streets and your speed drops below 45 miles per hour, it seamlessly switches to air power. And let's not forget the benefits, especially for city driving. We're talking reduced emissions, smoother rides, and a greener footprint all thanks to this innovative hybrid air technology from Jeep. Now, the thing to be excited about is that in city conditions, these hybrid air-powered vehicles can cruise on air power alone for a mind-blowing 60 to 80% of the time. And here's the cherry on top. PSA, the brains behind this prototype, is currently putting it through the paces. They set their sights on a combined fuel efficiency of 120 miles per gallon. Now, that's what I call aiming for the stars. Now, let's talk about the most important thing, cost. But fear not, because Stellantis and Jeep CEO Carlos Tavares are already ahead of the curve. By kicking pricey battery packs to the curb, typically found in traditional hybrid vehicles, the hybrid air system isn't just more budget-friendly, it's also simpler to install and maintain. It also offers flexibility in passenger compartment design without sacrificing precious trunk space. Win-win, right? but you might be scratching your head wondering why the Jeep CEO isn't jumping on the EV bandwagon. Well, Carlos Tavares isn't one to mince words. As the head honcho of Stellantis, overseeing a conglomerate of 12 automotive giants including Jeep, Ram, Chrysler, and Dodge, he has a thing or two to say about the EV revolution. In fact, 
Tavares has thrown a wrench into the EV story, calling its very foundations into question. Stellantis gave a bad outlook on the future of electric vehicles, EVs, at the first Freedom of Mobility Forum he held. What's the deal? It seems like the once-held savior of our dear planet is now under intense scrutiny and Tavares isn't holding back. So, while the world is in a frenzy to swap out the 1.3 billion gas-guzzling vehicles for cleaner electric alternatives, the CEO isn't shy about questioning the feasibility of such a massive overhaul. The primary concern? Resource scarcity. Take lithium, for example, the holy grail for EV batteries. Turns out, it might not be as abundant as we've hoped, and even if it is, bureaucratic hurdles and geopolitical tensions surrounding its extraction could turn the transition to EVs into a logistical nightmare. Now, let's entertain a hypothetical scenario. We ditch our trusty combustion cars and dive headfirst into EVs. But what about the elephant in the room? Rare earth metals. We'd be depleting these precious resources to manufacture batteries, which, you guessed it, causes many emissions. Companies should be upset the gasoline-powered cars are being outlawed while expensive electric cars with short ranges and lots of fancy tech features are being sent out. And it's not just words. Germany, for example, voted against combustion cars to clarify its point. Car companies like BMW and Porsche agree with this and are working hard on their own renewable fuels. The push for electric vehicles is also bad for the economy. Electric vehicles, EVs, already cost 40% more than cars with internal combustion engines. If combustion engines are banned, prices could go through the roof even more. Take a look at the Ford F-150 Lightning, which costs more than $100,000. That won't touch on how ridiculously expensive new EVs are. But making EVs is pricey, but we can't just charge people that much and expect them to pay. At this point, it's not easy, especially since rules seem to say that electric vehicles are the only way out. Don't be afraid though, because hope on the horizon. You don't have to jump into the EV abyss. Another option could produce some amazing results. Veras, for one, is singing a different tune. He has devised a plan that could cut carbon dioxide pollution by a huge 50% very quickly. Wow, that really will change things. According to experts, trading in cars 15 years or older for modern equivalents like the brand new compressed air engine is the way forward. Other automotive giants such as General Motors, Ford, Hyundai, and Rivian are already grappling with the mounting costs of battery materials. The introduction of new EV tax credit incentives, offering discounts on domestically made cars, has only added to the situation's complexity. It seems like the automotive industry is standing on shaky ground, with policies that could potentially be more divisive than inclusive. It's worth noting that Jeep itself hasn't been immune to these shifting market dynamics. First, they had to hop on the EV bandwagon, and now they're contending with a steady decline in sales and a tarnished brand image. Take the Jeep Wrangler, for instance. In 2015, you could snag one for around $35,000 to $38,000. Fast forward to 2023, and its price tag has skyrocketed to $52,000. Jeep is also currently struggling to establish itself as a premium label. The Jeep brand has suffered a hit due to the strategy change and problems with quality control. Stellantis, Ford, and GM are among the other automakers experiencing the heat, not just Jeep. Some even turn to their internal combustion businesses to make ends meet while selling their electric vehicles at a loss. Consider Volkswagen, which, to maintain a foothold in the Chinese market, lowered the cost of its ID3 model on repeated occasions. The luxury items now considered standard in EVs only worsen matters. What I mean is that BMW has subscription-based heated seats and automated parking. In light of everything that transpired, it is easy to envision a future when individuals must pay a monthly fee to use their own vehicle. Stellantis CEO Carlos Tavares has become increasingly vocal about the potential exclusion of middle-class consumers from the electric vehicle market due to rising production costs that manufacturers may be unable to afford. What happens when subsidies are reduced if that is the only thing preventing the price of EVs from rising? Stellantis is in a knot despite having a more passive approach to electric vehicles, EVs, than its Detroit rivals. A gasoline-powered range extender is even anticipated for their most luxurious electric truck, the Ram 1500 Rev. It's obvious that Tavares has reservations about electrification. So, what do you feel about this scenario? Share with us in the comment box below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.